Hi guys, before we get into the Hondery, I want to quickly apologise for the microphones not working on the first couple of clips. They do kick in soon, I promise. Hi guys, today I'm here with the Honda E, Honda's first full EV and the perfect city car. So we've come to Lincoln today to see if it ticks all those boxes. <laughs> PS and 315 newton meters of torque with a range of just 137 miles. And this particular model with the 17 inch alloys comes in at just 37 and a half thousand pounds. So not a lot of money for your range, but is it worth it? And weighing in at just 1.5 tons with that 35 kilowatt hour battery means we get a 0 to 60 time of 8.3 seconds. And what makes that even more impressive is rear wheel drive and because we have such a small battery it means charging does not take long at all with a rapid charger it only takes 31 minutes from 0 to 80 and even at home we found overnight we can go from zero to 100 percent and inside it's everything you expect an ev to be you don't just have three screens you actually have five as there are no wing mirrors they are done by these little cameras And on top of that, you also have a rear view mirror, but it's not just the mirror, it again turns into a camera. And what Honda have done has made it a really relaxing interior. You feel at ease as you should in an EV. You've got some really comfy seats that almost resemble a settee rather than a car seat. You also have some wood inside and just everything that you need, but is it worth the £40,000? And to add some practical touches, you even get five doors, so two seats in the back and a reasonable size boot considering the size of the car, meaning you can fit plenty in the boot. So enough about that, what does it drive like? And even in terms of the size of this car, the instant torque, all means that you can zoom all the way around the city. I'm having quite a bit of fun with it. And yes, the Honda E has one of the smallest turning circles at only 43 meters. This is crazy. And if you're not driving absolutely miles, you're not too worried about the range either, especially because it does charge up super quickly. I mean, it's only a 35 kilowatt hour battery. So to get to 100%, isn't going to take as long as charging fully a different car so even though yes i know mathematically you are charging the same amount in that same amount of time but in my head it means it's charging quicker because you're getting to 100 quicker even though you use 100 percent quicker but you know still inside is great it's got everything you need like apple carplay and even with the extra screen you can swap things around which means that your passengers want to play around with the maps or Spotify. They can easily do that without leaning over you and distracting the driver, essentially. My only bugbear is when Apple CarPlay is on the main center screen, you cannot see your miles anywhere, only the percentage in front of you. You have to swap the screens over to the passenger so that the miles come up on the middle screen. Now, that might be me not working out the right setting, but yes, that is, I think, one thing I'd like to be able to see my miles on the screen somewhere probably in front of me more likely when cruising around town the battery charge doesn't drop really suddenly like sometimes using petrol cars nipping that's a really cute dog oh my god that's adorable like i was saying sometimes when you're nipping around town in petrol car your miles per gallon drops significantly it's not quite as bad as this it's so perfect for city runarounds because you don't need miles and miles and miles you want something that's small that's quick that's quirky that's fun but if you do need to go out the city to see your family or just fancy a ride out you have the capability there and honda's technology does not stop there you can even get an app which pretty much babysits the car and can do things like preheat the car battery to ensure that you get some extra range honda are known for the civic type r and the nsx fantastic handling cars and they have developed another brilliant chassis that shows they have handling at heart. You have a 50-50 weight distribution, which means the car just sticks right glue all the way around the corner. 
the fact that the battery and the lower center of gravity is there and also the rear wheel drive you can have a lot of fun with this car and it's just a little funky ev as with any ev the torque delivery is fantastic it is there initially power does start to drop off at around 50 miles an hour and it is limited to 99 which means we're not going to see any triple figures but that's whole part of this car it's fun and it's quirky and you can have a lot of fun with those initial corners you're not trying to beat the top speed because if you go above 70 your range drops like hell but if you're having some fun on the b roads it actually lasts pretty well so not that we should be doing above the speed limit anyway you even have a sport mode which gives you your torque a little bit earlier it isn't massively noticeable initially but if you really are pushing it you can notice a bit of a difference in terms of brakes it feels very much like a normal pedal you can even feed it off really nicely and as soon as you pop it into one pedal mode you can pick with some flappy paddles how strongly you like it you can have it where it's stopping quite a lot or just back it off so you're in more of control it means it is a lot more user friendly for those that aren't a huge fan of one pedal but it's there for those that want to make the most out of it i've heard so many positive things about the honda e and i've been really excited to get in one and when i've not been absolutely terrified by the range it has been an incredible car if you can go and have a blast with it it is so much fun but for longer journeys it just hasn't got the capability in british infrastructure i mean when we went to lincoln where we parked the car there's two chargers out of a massive city multi-story and both chargers were broken. Now this is a struggle across all EVs because the infrastructure in the UK is still developing and isn't just quite there with the technology of the cars. The biggest thing I thought that was gonna be very strange to get used to was the wing mirrors. And weirdly enough, after the first five minutes, you completely forget that you're using cameras rather than mirrors. So don't let that ever put you off. They are actually really cool and really clear, even at night, which is one worry I was thinking about. When we come to practicality, the boot is tiny. It does fit just enough in. If you put the seats down, you actually have a really good amount of space. So you have the choice of having a reasonable four-seater with a tiny boot or a great two-seater with a average size boot. So you can fit things like we've got the footstools in there. We've had bags, coats, the charging cables. Everything's fitted in, actually. Not too shabby. In terms of safety features, as we expect with any modern, new, especially electric car, it has them all we've got things like adaptive cruise control lane assist it's actually not too intrusive as i find some safety features the lane assist isn't massively chucking you back it's more just a little bit of a warning the same with the adaptive cruise the car isn't slamming the brakes on as soon as you get to the point it kind of realizes gradually and you can adapt actually to how close you want that to be which you can actually get pretty close which helps in terms of things like overtaking you have that little bit extra time to react. And even down to things like speakers and heating, you've only got a little space to fill. So sound quality is actually very, very good. You can have a right fun sing along with this. As well as heating, although you're a little bit conscious over your battery percentage, it doesn't take too long to heat the thing up, which is a great plus. And it's fantastic that we're here stuck in traditional town traffic and it's so quiet. You haven't got a chugging engine going off. It's comfortable easy to stop and start yeah it's a great car to be in for city traffic so to conclude my review of the honda e whilst it is an absolutely incredible car and the tech and drive of it is so much fun unfortunately for someone like myself who commutes a lot of miles the range on this isn't quite there yet but if you're someone who is whizzing around a city, doesn't have far to travel for work and still enjoys the fun of this car, it is perfect. So there you have it guys, you all know the drill. So make my journey your journey, like, follow, subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>